five minutes. Your awareness may be powerful enough to control your instincts. Your instinct will be to remove your hand from the box. It's your girl Mish, and welcome to another episode of the Love Mish Podcast. a mom baby or not it's your birthright no matter the quality of your eggs the blockage of your tubes or the health of your womb you will bathe well men just as aunties are promoted to mother pre-moms are moms on standby it's a tough journey but you got what it takes or this would have not been given to you for we all know the saying god will never put more on you than you can bear so let's not waste our time in the wait. Let's prepare, Mama Bear. Get your mind, body, and soul ready for baby. Learn from books, blogs, podcasts, and real life moms. They are teaching you by example. Help mothers in your life and give love to all the little ones that orbit your planet. One day, when the time is right, an angel will be all yours. Blessings, love, and baby dust. Love, Mish. Hey, loves, and welcome to another episode of Love Mish Podcast. This is part three of Pregnant-ish. And um, remember I said I wasn't sure if I was going to go over the book. I do want to talk about the book a little bit. And also the digital uh, inspiration cards, encouragement cards. So I'll start with those first. So I have a link for... First of all, let me just shout out Image Picker. And they have upgrades. So, honey, the money. They got some of that stimulus money. <laughs> um, when I was doing credit repair, one girl, she found this. She put everybody's name on it. She spun the wheel, and that person would get money, right? I was like, oh, my God, that is so freaking amazing. So, I just saved it. And... I'm going to order some Oracle cards for myself, but because I'd be using pick art from all over the world, honey, I can't sell them. Um, maybe when I do my own pick art and the images are mine or whatever, I'll be able to do that. But I still want to be able to encourage people over the world, right? So I put all the pictures and images on, how many is it? It's 78 on the wheel. And when you spin it, and one comes up, just just think of that as shuffling the cards and picking a card. Um, what I am gonna do though is make an ebook, a, a fertility baby dust inspiration card ebook. And so when you do spin a name, you'll know what I mean by it. Now, when you first started doing oracle cards, tarot, whatever, 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 you read the book, you see what the meaning is, or you listen to the person, you get their interpretation. When you get more in tune with yourself and your intuition or when you start to listen more to universe or the different signs around you or your higher self or your angels or, you know, whatever, you start to get those answers from within. And it's so crazy because when people go through stuff, I have the most amazing advice in the world. It just comes out. Shit. I don't even be knowing because if I knew I would have applied it to my life. Right. Um. Some stuff, I'd be like, oh, I need to do that. So just know, just like pastors get up there and they be giving the sermon and da-da-da-da, or um, somebody will start speaking in tongues, or someone will be like, I have a word for you. Just know that there's gifts out there that people don't talk about. Like, there's people that can really see spirits. There's people that can really talk to ghosts. So some oracle people... They might be shuffling them cards, talking about, oh, I'm picking up this from your grandma, da, 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 da. Little do you know, they can actually, your grandma is standing next to them, talking to them. You get what I'm saying? But since that's not my gift, <laughs> at least I don't think it is, um, 
I just look at the image and just kind of go with what my heart, my soul, you know, my intuition says. So I want to do a couple of them and I can't wait to do the book. This is going to be the next thing that I do. And I'm going to be honest with y'all when I'm not doing this, my anxiety is loud. It's loud. The tunnel, the bottomless pit is bottomless pitting. Um, you know, depression is knocking on my door. You know, I'm wanting to not be here anymore. Um, I'm just like, okay, Lord, next, this earth thing is ghetto as fuck and I want out. But when I'm doing this, I don't know if it's because I'm not focusing on it or because I'm putting my focus somewhere. Maybe that's what it is. When I'm not focusing, all I have is that. But if I'm focused, it's blocking that. So am I not focused enough in my life? Apparently not, because I have a million things that I want to do that I haven't done. But that's because you made me poor, God. <laughs> this is not my conversation be. If I was a millionaire right now, I, ha- I would have a publicist on my ass. And I would, like, literally pay them to do that. Um, you know, I would have a business person. I would have somebody do my social media. Like, all this shit would be lined up to where all I have to do is... Yeah, I was thinking about that. I think this is a good idea. Da, da, da. And they would just take it and run with it. But since there's no money for that team, it's all of that is falling on me. And I, I want to do too many things. So one thing I did realize, I have to focus on one thing at a time, which I hate just because I have monkey brain. So I'll buy a million books and they'll all be sitting on the bookshelf. But if I say don't buy any more books, finish this book and I finish that book. It helps me to finish that book because I want to hear them order the next book. <laughs> so crazy. The life of Mish. Um, but yeah, this is because I used to look at a show. It was called. What was that show called? Savannah. It was like rich people of Savannah. And one guy, he wanted to start a pillow company and his girlfriend broke up with him because, oh, that's what it was. He failed the boards and she didn't know. And he just wouldn't study and do what he needed to do to do the boards. I guess in that town, you really have to make something of yourself. And since he didn't fit that picture, she ended up breaking up with him. When they broke up, it really killed him. Like he really fell into a slump or whatever. And he hired this lady to help him with the pillow company. And she would come over with her laptop And she would do his calls and get his fabric and, like, literally be on his ass. And he had a successful pillow company because of her. So I realized, like, I'm not not a one-man show, which is okay. As much as I hate. Because in college, I would do the whole paper by myself. Like, I hated teamwork. But I see now that there's people in different positions that love to do what you hate to do. And that's what makes a great team. So whenever that does happen, I'll be excited for it because I can finally sit down at the table and give somebody all my ideas and they'll be able to pick them up and tell me exactly what to do with them or, or actually get the ball rolling. But they're still my ideas and my and my babies and I'm still going to, you know, continue to grow and the Lord will help me give birth to them. Okay, so let me go ahead and spin... So I'm spinning, I don't know if you guys can hear it, uh, pickerwheel.com. It's free. You just put your pictures on there, spin, and it'll tell you, it'll pop up one of your pictures. So the one that came up is, I sat with my anger long enough until she told me her real name was Grief. (laughs) So what this is telling me in my life is I have been angry for the longest time. And I did not know where to pinpoint that anger. So I pointed it at everybody. I pointed it at my parents. I pointed it at my relationships. I pointed it at my friends, at my siblings. Like, and people do this all the time. You just don't know it. For example, I work at the IRS and people are upset that their taxes aren't there. And they'll yell at me for 10 minutes straight. And I have to be courteous and nice and take it. Bullshit. Um, Just because I'm getting paid, I still don't agree with that. And then they'll say, I'm sorry, I know you just work there, but the IRS should just really give me my money. I could really use it. So you're not even mad at me. You're mad at the IRS. 
and you just gave me all your shit. I kind of feel like what this is saying is I was just mad for a very, very long time. But it really wasn't anger. That's just when I think of um, Inside Out, that is the emotion that I connect with the most. I'm not getting my way. Anger. This happens. Anger. Da, da, da. Anger. 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 That's just like my go-to emotion. But there's other emotions that are really there. Maybe that I haven't recognized or haven't learned to deal with. So I just call them all anger. And that's why I'm it's so excited to like sit down with somebody because I have ideas about things, but I don't know if I'm really right about these things. And just having them confirm or redirect me or show me to a book would just, I know, just going to improve my life. But what this is confirming to me is I'm grieving, you know, I'm grieving a lot of losses. Um... I'm grieving, you know, the loss of three missing, you know, three angel babies. Um, grieving, you know, relationships that have failed and the trauma in those relationships. Um, with both parties having an outside child. Um, I'm grieving, you know, bad choices that I've made. You know, um, just wanting to be in relationships so bad, but just picking guys that are just like a hell no. And my mom, she'll even say, like, I, you know, that's not the guy for you. I see you with someone else. Like, you have so much ambition, so much stuff. She'll be like, that's not him. But I'm like, you know, hey, that's mom. Because she, she's so modest. I can't believe she gave birth to me. <laughs> I'm up here on stripper poles, taking naked pictures, the OnlyFans. And my mother would never, <laughs> ever. And it doesn't bother me, like, one bit. You know, I don't care. I thought they were okay that if my dad, brother, or pastor saw them, you know, they would be okay. Like, it definitely wasn't Pornhub to me. Um, but I just had learned to love my body and my weight and sexuality, which just was just nothing that anyone in my family, from my grandmother down, ever talked about or showed. And it was like, we are women. There's a whole world of sexuality here. And strippers and hoes are the only ones that are tapping into it. Like, no, that's why they stealing everybody, man. You know, something is wrong here. So, you know, that's when I took the sexology class and, you know, began to, like, learn about it on my own since nobody else wanted to talk about it. Um, but, yeah, getting back to this, I sat with my anger long enough until she told me her real name was Grief. So that was the first thing I was talking to my mom about. Like, I need to get a Grief counselor and she was like yeah she even mentioned ptsd so i'm thinking military but apparently i have a mixture of grief sad and ptsd i don't want to take pharmaceutical because i do not trust them one bit i do not want to have suicidal thoughts i bet if they look at all the people that are on those prescript i bet if they look at the people before they were on the prescriptions that were alive and healthy and then after they got on the prescriptions, they haven't committed suicide. Like, that's a red flag. Like, you're not finna, you know, I'm I'm committed to staying here and living out this life. You're not finna give me a pill that's gonna help me get out of here. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, I'm asking for help. I'm not asking you to end my life. I don't know. I just think somebody needs to investigate that. And that's kind of creepy and scary. But if it's not holistic, a herb or a tea, like, it's gonna be a hell no for me. Um... But I need to look into those too. Like the same way I can find fertility teas, I can find like PTS, you know, grief teas and stuff like that. And just, just like understanding, is this something that I'm going to have to live with forever? Is this something that wants to talk to me and after we talk, it's going to go? Um, I don't know, just like coping. Like I just need coping and I remember telling my other therapist that, like, I know I'm going to cry. I know I'm going to be okay. I know this person, because I don't even really believe in death. Like, I have dreams about this person. So that's even crazy, like, being alive and knowing that they're gone, but dreaming and talking to them and them even knowing that they're gone, like, feel like I'm fucking extra traveling and then wake up. Like, what the fuck? Like, that's even more trauma because you were just with someone who's gone so everybody's gonna think you crazy i don't know it's just so weird but life does not end y'all it's just, we are eternal like beings and we just have different experiences like a spiral like i'm gonna get a spiral tattoo because that's exactly what this is just like a tree it's a seed 
it grows, it becomes a tree, it bears fruit, it dies, but that seeds go back in the ground and is reborn. Or you cut it down and now it's a house. Or you cut it down and now it's a chair. Or you cut it down, you know, and it just becomes a bowl or whatever you're going to turn it into. But you get what I'm saying? The life doesn't end. And even when it becomes sawdust, now it's in the wind. Or it's, it's part of the dirt. It's part sand. Like, like life still <laughs> goes on down to the micro level, which we haven't even began to tap into because they say as above, so below, as within, so without. It's so crazy. And isn't that the cross? If you take a line and go from up to down, left to right, it's a cross. <laughs> but yeah, so grief. I sat with my anger long enough until she told me her real name was grief. If I was reading this to someone else, I would say, you're not really angry. Or you have a right to be angry. But it's not truly anger, it's grief. Write down all of the things that you're angry about and write down how they could cause you grief. That's how we give it to someone else. So see how, how that just flows? But it didn't flow to me. Let me write down everything that I'm angry about and if it's grief. So again, like don't, don't be mad at people for telling you stuff. Like that message could have been for you. You mad because God gave them a message for you because you couldn't hear God on your own, number one. So somebody else had to tell you and you mad because they're not doing it. Honey, that message was for you. Um, so yeah, let me do it again. This is so cool. I'm just so happy that I can help someone. You just never know what people be going through. Okay, I'm going to spin it again. Why well, can't exit off this stupid thing? It's advertisements on here, y'all. So y'all going to have to let me spin again. Okay, I got to reload the page because I couldn't get rid of that stupid advertisement. Well, that's what they did. They done learned how to make advertisement money. I see what they did here. I like to shuffle them each time just so that the colors aren't, aren't next to each other. I like to see different colors everywhere. And then I do spin. This is so cool to me. I'm going to do three. Three is my life path number. So this next one said, God is within her. She will not fail. So for me, that means you're going to have a child and a family. All of your heart's desire is just not time. I need you to focus on X, Y, Z. I mean, A, B, C, and you'll get to X, Y, Z, okay? Um, so that's just a personal message for me. And I am okay with that. It's just I need to learn how to deal with the feels. And, and until I get to X, Y, Z, how do I deal? That's what I need help with. And if I was giving this message to someone else, I would tell them the same thing, like, you will be a mother. Um, now, that may be, you know, unorthodox to you, but you will be a mother. Um, so just do everything that you can, mind, body, and soul, to help your body. If your body can't do it, look into other options like IVF. If that's not an option, you can look into a surrogate. If that's not an option, you can look into adoption. You know, if that's not an option, just be the best auntie to all the kids in your life. Be the best godmom to all the kids in your life. Volunteer at a school with kids, um, Girl Scouts. Uh, there's so many like kid organizations, Boy Scouts. Um, there's the Daniel. I remember I wanted to volunteer like a big brother, big sister. Um, there's like a Daniel's. Uh, orphanage you know you can volunteer and help them like being a mother is more than giving birth through your vagina mothers are creative they have knowledge and wisdom they are closer to God so they have that wisdom not only do you mother kids if you have them but you mother your friends you can even mother your parents. You can even mother your siblings. You can even mother your family. You can even mother strangers. Because it's really just that nurturing, loving care that you have. And don't just box that into the word mom. It's woman. All of that comes with your womb right. Um, because even my grandma 
granddaddy had some kids outside and she even took them in and raised them so you know being a mom is just not your biological it's all of the souls and I even even now when I look at marriages and relationships and stuff women mother their partners too yeah so God is within you you will not fail honey that's what I would say uh, let me do another one because three is way it be. And I can't wait to like write. I'm going to have so much fun writing these. <clears throat> the next one I have is this will happen for us. Now, Lord, who is this us? <laughs> that would be my question. Who is this us? Um, this, it's a us, Lord. Oh, you telling me he coming? Oh, okay. Um. And then for someone else, if they're single, I'd be like, girl, us, somebody is on their way. It's a U.S., not you. Um, And if they have a partner, I'd be like, y'all better get ready. Um, Because I think when they say it takes nine months to have a baby, it probably takes longer because there's a picture of a mother being pregnant. So there's a baby in her stomach. And then there's a picture of a baby in her stomach. And all of them have eggs. Like you're born with your eggs already. So although we say, oh, I had this baby in nine months for 72 hours. No, honey. If you're 34, you had that baby at 34 years, nine months and 24 hours. So we just going to have longer babies, though. You know what I mean? Somebody else might have had their baby at 18 years, nine months, 10 hours. You get what I'm saying? So my baby going to come out already being 34 years because they pick up the knowledge and wisdom from you. This is like a DNA thing. This is a spiritual thing. This is a conscious thing. Like, that's why usually parents who have their kids older, you see their kids are like more wise old souls because they got that from their parents. Um, So, yeah, my little Bambimo's going to be coming out way ahead of the game because mommy done lived and learned and is ready to give the world to you so um i would just tell them like prepare like you know that this is gonna happen that's something that we all know when is something you can't control so stop worrying about that but in the now just do what you can for the now can you drink a tea today drink a tea and you celebrate because you drunk your fertility tea can you exercise and do a pregnancy yoga celebrate because you did your pregnancy yoga today um can you do a castor oil pack celebrate because you did a castor oil pack today and that's all you need to do in this day go to sleep and have a great rest tomorrow we'll worry about tomorrow what can you do in tomorrow can you eat healthy? Great. You ate healthy. Can you do a smoothie? Great. You did a smoothie. And just do it day by day and it will happen. Just do it day by day. And that was a whole message for me. That was crazy. Okay, so let's see. Now I want to go into the book. So go check out my own link tree and check out the Fertility Baby Dust. Um, encouragement cards, and I will have the ebook up, you know, whenever I can finish those 78. Um, I'm just so stoked about that because when I ordered the cards, it was like, make sure you had a copyright for all these cards, yada, yada, yada. I checked yes, even though I don't, but I know I'm going to keep the cards for myself. And so instead of trying to get these to other people, I was able to to find a way to still give it to them without getting in trouble for copyright and stuff. So I'm at least happy that I'm still able to do what I want to do, skipping all the legal shit. I'm happy about that. Okay, so the name of my book, baby, number two, is called More Than One in Four, Lessons from Infertility. My um, pen name, more everything, is Love Mish. Uh, I gave that to myself a very long time ago. Love Mish is the umbrella for every little thing else that I think of goes under that. Um, And I just knew, like, coming here, my earth mission was always love. Always. And then my life path number is three. 
and a, and a master of that would be 33. So just reminding myself to remember my mission, which will be my life, life path number and love and to master them. So just a reminder to myself. Okay, so uh, to start out, I said past, heal from the past. I'm more than one in four. Present, learn and apply to the present. Now doesn't mean not ever. And future, manifest that future baby. And so it will be. To the infertile woman who wonders if you will ever, if it will ever be her turn, I see you, I am you, and I am praying for you. Introduction, author's note, chapter one, infertility, pregnancy, and infant loss. Chapter two, my story. Chapter three, baby shadow work. Chapter four, womb prayers. Chapter five, womb healing. Chapter six, affirmation. Chapter seven, pre-mommy. Chapter eight, manifest, visualize. Chapter nine, the gift. Chapter 10, Dear, Dear Mothers, and, and the last part is Resources, which was Loving Links. Um, let me see how much time, because I know I'd be, I be gone. Um, I just had so much fun doing this. Chapter 1, Infertility, Pregnancy, and Infants Loss. Oh, I know what I could do. I could read all the little quotes. So there is no foot too small that it cannot leave an, imp an imprint on the world. Shout out to all of us fighting a battle that most people don't understand. Keep hanging in there. Okay, so I want to do that. And infertility, pregnancy, and infant loss. Women have wombs and wombs bear children. The most painful road to travel as a woman is the road of not being able to conceive Hold to term or birth to life a child of your own. Love, Mish. Um, if you are on this journey like me, you know exactly what this topic is all about. However, I thought it would be befitting to address the elephant in the room, right? I mean, it's in every room I go in. At work, the pictures of kids on the cubicles. In the store, the kids asking mom for toy or candy. In traffic, parents rushing kids to daycare or buses shuffling kids to school. In the apartment next to the pool, the kids screaming with the joys of summer time water fun it's a battle that was given to us the warriors i know you don't think you can handle it but that does not mean but not now doesn't mean not ever and trust me like I, even as i'm reading this and writing this book i get it it's okay to see kids everywhere it's okay like that's really not it it's something else that i'm definitely gonna try to figure out in therapy like with me knowing one thing Okay, so why are my eyes crying if I know that this is something that I can't overcome? So why are my eyes crying? It's like, is it something else that I'm over? You know, is it something else that I'm missing? Is it not even for infertility at all? Is it something else that I even need to be working on? So it's it's like driving me crazy. Like, I remember telling my other therapist, like, when my ex died, I was like, I know he's gone. Like, I don't even believe in death. I see him in my dreams and we talk like it's nothing but I'm still crying, you know what I mean? And it's just so weird to me. Like, I, I literally be in two places at once, and it's so crazy. I wonder if that's a thing. Like, is my mind not picking up, okay, we're back here now, we're not there anymore? Is my mind getting lost in the travels? Like, I don't know. It's so crazy. Because I swear, like, some of my dreams, I have a whole family we live in a whole life, kids and all. And then I'm like back here. And I'm and I'm probably crying because I didn't want to wake up. That's probably what it is. Like I didn't want to wake up. Like I feel like that was the real life. And this one keeps snatching me back. <laughs> I don't know. It's so crazy. My poor therapist. She is going to have a field day. Um, Let's see. So I put like a video, like the ones that you guys heard, and I asked questions, like it's going to be a journal prompt. And it says, how did this video make you feel? How are your journeys similar and different? Did you learn something new? How did they overcome? What can you take and apply to help you on your journey? I thought that was interesting. Um, so it's like a lot of journal prompts in here. And I even made like a baby book. And I want to show that on my YouTube. Like I got a book. I painted it white. I put blue and pink like glitter on it. And like markings and hearts and stuff. 
I got baby scrapbook again and put it all over the front. And like, this is my baby book. I wrote a book to my letters. I, I wrote my baby names. I have my birth. I have questions in there. Like, what is your birth plan? How do you make um, hemp milk? Like, it's so much stuff in there. And I'm just going to focus on filling up that book. So whenever I do have a family, like, girl, you already did the work. You know about hemp milk. Let me flip to this page. You got the recipe. You know, everything will already be there. Because usually it's like you find out you're pregnant. Oh, shit, you got nine months to get that shit together. So it's really a blessing in disguise. God has given me this extra time. Number one, the extra time to, like, really be young and do, you know, foolish stuff. Because I would hate to be like a foolish mom. And there are a lot of them. Um, but to have reached a place of maturity to like not do certain things with the knowledge and wisdom that I have, I feel like, you know, now is a better time to have a child than before. So I am thankful for, cause that's what time has done for me. It's matured me. And maybe that's the same for everyone. You know, I can't take that away from everyone. Um, but even me, like not knowing about me and different stuff like that, I just would have been, I would have me personally with the heart that I have I would have felt horrible that I fed that to my husband and my kids and now I've learned this stuff and I'm trying to change and they like well you eat your damn salad we want hamburgers (laughs) so I'm happy that I'm in a place where I could be like I want my kids to eat like this for at least the first five years like until they go to school and then it's cafeteria shit no because I want to homeschool So I want my kids to eat like this and either my partner be on board 100% or I, or we come to some type of middle agreement, like, okay, well, let's just do seafood and and white meat or fish, or, you know, they might go out and sneak and get McDonald's and shit, but I know I'll be cooking majority of the time and I can have more power with the food. So I'm not worrying about that, but just having that chance to like, okay, what type of mate? do you want for your kids do you really want them to meet eat meat at all because that's going to affect their dna which is going to have an effect on your kids too you know do you want them to have this type of mind do you want to be the only one teaching them about chakras and you know meditation stuff do you you know so just time itself has been a blessing just because i've grown so much and i'm able to kind of choose the the perfect partner for my kids one that's in a line with me and then together we can have kids so time has really been a blessing in disguise for me so i can't even really be mad um here's one it's hard to wait around for something you know might might never happen it's even hard to give up when you know it's everything you want everything you want um let's see i got womb prayers in here i got fertility deities and goddesses and healing goddesses and fertility sigils and symbols i got womb healing in here i got crystals and food like i've been on this journey for a minute (laughs) y'all i could i could share some things I think I just got impatient because one, one, most people be like, I took the pills and in a month I'm pregnant. And that didn't happen for me. And I'm like, the fuck? These shit's expensive. Do they work or not? And I remember, oh my God, even with my ex, I remember I bought a kit for $300 and it was like teas. And I'm like, this, number one, this shit is nasty. I didn't know anything about holistic. I'm like, this, I spent all this money. This shit is nasty. We still ain't pregnant. It was so stressful, and um, now I know, like, a little bit more about it. Like, uh, red leaf and raspberry leaf. And, I mean, like, they're so just, just our, our eating is really shit. Even with me being vegan, we're supposed to put more herbs and vitamins. I think we can really survive off of fruits vegetable hurt and herbs and like teas and stuff i think vitamins really is taking it to the medical side when we can really just stick to the herb or the root and get it from there because ain't no telling what they do when it get to the lab they probably mixing it with fillers and shit but 
I don't think we really needed all of this stuff. And it really fucked up our bodies and our diet. And our DNA is probably like, what the fuck? Like, bitch, you're not even giving me the vitamins I need to make a baby. You give me what I need and I'll do what I'm, what I'm programmed to do. You ain't giving me what I need. I can't do. That's like trying to start your car with no gas. So I do want to find, a, what's, so what's next on my list would be to find a homopath. I got my therapist, find a homopathic or a chiropractic doctor that's on the holistic side to do my blood work and make sure everything's okay there. And I want to also find an acupuncturist to do acupuncture to release the energies out of my meridians and landlines. Um, I do want to set up some Reiki sessions. To do Reiki healing on the spiritual side while I work on the physical side. And I'm going to be doing a Reiki training. So I'm excited about that coming up in March. And I'm going to continue my fertility massage. So I'm just going to be doing what I need to do. to to, So my body won't be like, you're asking me to do something that I can't do. (laughs) Like put some gas on the car, baby. My body's probably like, give me the vitamins and the herbs that I need and I'll do what I'm supposed to do. So funny. Okay, so another one I have is please let the baby dust blow my way. I say. Affirmations. Um, Like this book is so cute. If you know anybody that's dealing with this, please send them the link. Um. But yeah, that was pretty much it for this episode. Um, Be sure to keep up with my The Mommy and Me new YouTube. Um, And as I start to do like little arts and crafts, I'll upload videos. But you know, I have like so many things that I focus on. So um, it'll be here, there, everywhere just because I get bored so fast and I just can't be doing the same thing over and over. So, and I'm just thankful for YouTube. Shout out to YouTube because I have met, so many people have been on here talking about infertility. It's like, how long have I been using YouTube? And I haven't really, like when I looked on there six years ago, it was that same girl on there. She done had a baby six years later. But now I'm starting to see more. So I think people are starting to talk about it more because she was like the only one on there. Um, and she she didn't even conceive. So it was like, well, did the stuff work? Like she just told us about it and left. I guess she was determined to not get the surgery and stuff. And she was just going to have to take that stuff however long it took to get her child. And it's so funny because she said um, that she wasn't even taking the stuff anymore and the baby came. So I think with all the different teas and stuff, you take it and then you have to give your body a rest. And that's when the baby come. I think people are taking it and expecting the baby to come at the same time. But no, it's a period of rest. A lot of people, too, have tried so much, didn't have a baby, adopted. And when they were just done with the stress, you know, whatever, they end up having a child of their own. I don't know why. Because, like, that stress was gone. You know, you were stressing about having a child. You adopted. You finally have a child. It's like you can breathe. Y'all probably having more fun having sex. It's not really a job. And then, ding, 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 here comes the baby. So, I'm going to take them because I'm in my single season. And I could take them. Because sometimes they'll be like, don't take them when you're ovulating. Da, 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 da. Well, I don't. Because you was like, that could slow down your chances of getting pregnant. Well, I could take as many as I want, as often as I want. And then I'll just give myself a break. And then, you know, start back up again and then give myself a break. And then sometime, well, before the end of this year is up, I will schedule a HSG just to see um, if the ink is going through all the way, if my tube is open. And that'll be my confirmation if, if all my hard work has worked for this year. And... Yeah, we can we can go from there. But yeah, YouTube has helped me just meet so many new people and so many new clubs and so many new email lists and it'd be sad too because one lady I follow she they were trying for ten years, had a baby, the baby's three, they done got a divorce. It's like, oh shit. So I'm thinking infertility infertility is just one thing, honey. People is dealing with divorce. People is dealing with loss of parents, loss of job. I think life is is trying to toughen me up because it's like 
if you can't handle this baby girl <laughs> you ain't gonna make it through the rest of this life so we need to toughen you up right now so that you can experience the other things in life because we got to strengthen your muscle i know i'm like a little baby like a little cry baby i'm so sensitive this cancer moon i always want things to be happy but you know that's not so yeah, <clears throat> lastly, I just want to read the dedication and then that'll be kind of it. <clears throat> so it says dedication. I dedicate this book to God. First and foremost, you have been so patient with me as I've lived life all off the path. Thank you for still trusting me with this mission. I thought it was a curse for the longest, but what God blesses, no man can curse. I dedicate this to my mother. Secondly, Woo child, as I contemplate motherhood, I apologize for being so hard on you and expecting you to provide what you had no no knowledge of. Forgive me. I love you to the moon and back for always being my cheerleader. Thank you for wiping my tears and giving me the tools I need in this life as a woman and future mom. To my siblings, in-law, and friends who birthed beautiful babies and included me in your journey, Thank you. Although I felt left out, I cannot really say that because with your babies, I truly experience momminess. I'm forever grateful and I love you. XO, XO, love me. If there's a book that you want to read, but it hasn't been written yet, then you must write it. So that's all for this episode. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I forgot what I was doing. I was telling y'all what all my YouTubes are, and then it started to play a video, and it cut off. So, I was like, really? So, now I have Love Mish, which is just my first ever YouTube page, but it has all my conscious. So, if you go look at that playlist, it has all my conscious videos. And then I have Love Mish podcast, which goes under Love Mish, but there's only 10-second clips of each of not all of them i haven't done all the podcasts yet but on my podcast and then there's auntie boost inc which i'm about to relaunch this year and just give little youtube tips to all the auntie boos all over the world like how to make natural deodorant what their chakras are what kids zodiac means um which i'll be able to play for my kids one day um and then there's mish at night where if you go look at the playlist right now, it has tips on relationships, stuff, love, you know, sexual podcast, you know, all to do with that, which is going to be, um, I'm going to do one more book called Yoni Love about Yoni and then like how to Yoni steam and all like that. And then I'm going to move into relationship world and I'm going to write a book about my partner and what I want in a partner, manifesting a partner. And no, probably before that, I'll do the my the book of me where you do different quizzes and stuff and just learn more about yourself. And then I'll do the partner. And I want to just brand those together, like work on yourself, manifest your man and then, you know, your baby. Um, but yeah, no content right now. So you can just check out the playlist and then there's shop love me, which. Again, as my credit gets higher, my business credit will get higher. I'll start to get loans and, you know, different funding for that. And I can, you know, hire a team that can help me, you know, sell my crystal plates, crystal spoon, crystal straws, just everything holistic, um, self-love, you know. And maybe I can even put my the, the books that aren't free, I could probably put them on there. Um, and then Love Mish Publishing is where I'm going to like recommend the books that I read, but I could also go all out with my books as well. Um, so I'm probably going to do another podcast where I actually go over my book and I'll put it under there. So I'll probably take a picture of it. And put it under the mommy and me with a link to Love Me Publishing. Since that's all about the book. To just keep them in their different categories. 
So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I'm going to end up having one more for real estate or real, my real tricks page. Which I thought I, oh, I didn't have it yet. My real tricks page is going to be everything to do with real estate. But I'm not going to start that journey until I find a broker. So I'm going to put this in the atmosphere. I want a female African-American broker in Florida or Georgia, wherever the Lord ends up putting me. Because I'm going to tell my job that they need to accommodate me for an off-the-phone job because it gives me stress and anxiety and I can't take it. That's that's the goal. <laughs> and they may have to send me to Atlanta, but we'll see. But, um... That's the type of broker that I want. My, my The broker that I really want is in Charleston. So if if the Lord blow me that way, then it can be, you know, an African-American family man. I love it because he's married. You know, he has military background. I love that his he has a strong black woman by his side. And I just see them dominating. And what I've learned is most of the successful men have women by their sides whether it's their wife or you know their operations manager or their secretary it's always a woman hello so i really love that so that'll end up being eight pages that i have under the love mish umbrella and i'm gonna try to put a three in all of like I couldn't put a three in love me publishing and maybe I could just add a three but that's my life path number so I always want to have that on my on the at the front of my mind life path number which is talking writing I just can't get away from it which is probably why I love this so much so yeah thank you for tuning in for the three-part series of pregnant ish um i just never ever talk about this i think this is a part of healing and i just can't wait to have my first therapy session just to kind of see you know what my therapist has to say about all of this and just just to continue to grow and share because you know y'all know that's what i do i learn and i share what i learn so I will catch you guys on the next podcast, um, which will be the Invisible Rainbow is one of them. And what was the other one? I did the Metaverse. The Invisible Rainbow. It was the Invisible Rainbow or something else, but I know that one is going to be so long, but there's so much stuff in there I want to share with you guys. It's crazy. Invisible rainbow. Oh, so I just found out. I remember this comedian always used to say Negus all the time. I think Negus, which was like king royalty, was mocked. Get in there, you Negus. That, that's royalty. And it ended up, you know, being watered down, broken country, you know, non-Britain English and it came nigga but i want to get a shirt that said niggas because they were royal and the whole story behind that was so beautiful like i want to share that story and that's just me just learning random stuff like that and just sharing it um but stuff like that is powerful to me like they took something so beautiful and royal and just put shit all over it but we can wash it off and be like no this is not shitty <laughs> this you wish you were royalty that's what it is um so yeah that was interesting so i'll just keep reading and learning and sharing whatever the universe um you know brings to me but i do thank you so much for listening every click every play um you know it really means a lot to me um I hope you were able to take something from it. If it it wasn't for you, share it with someone. It's millions of women in the world. Again, this is probably a topic that nobody's going to talk about. But um, 
if you just share my link tree i have other stuff on there too like how to get a house credit repair like you know i don't have a house but i still have a link on there where you could start the process you know you might not have been gone through the things that i've gone through and you might be able to start the process a little bit faster i'm not about to get a house and i don't know if my job is going to be there what's the point of getting a mortgage that i may not be able to pay do you get what i'm saying so and that was divvy so my link tree has a plethora of information like I don't know i just like to learn and share and they are all my affiliate links so just with me sharing some companies do a kit back like if you sign up for self credit card builder they'll send me ten dollars and if you get someone to sign up they'll send you ten dollars so look we didn't do shit for ten damn dollars you get what i'm saying stuff like that really adds up and just think of that on a corporate level these social media websites will share those apps and they're getting them 10 damn dollars you get what i'm saying we just see it on a small scale but that's really how the world works um but let me stop before we start a whole new podcast i can't remember what the other segment was going to be but i'll just keep giving you guys different segments um they all are under the love niche umbrella just know it's either going to be about the mommy and me that's going to be about fertility auntie boo that's going to be about if when i do little interviews with the kids love me publishing is gonna be when i do like book reviews and i'm gonna start putting that logo on there because i'm about to do one now which is the invisible rainbow um misha at night would be the relationships oh yeah i want to do that one i saw my favorite uh little relationship youtube is um what is it called is it calm now i gotta switch to it just so i can remember what it was let me see let me go to my history i cannot believe i forgot the fucking name of that thing let me just scroll down and see if i see it real quick no they would do that okay so let me go to history i know it's in my history how did i fucking forget the skin is deep is a good one too uh people will get on there and and talk about different topics i love like just hearing from different people cut that's the name of it so cut and they'll be like tell us about your worst breakup would you get back with your ex it's just so interesting to just hear you know people different opinions um i see it was another one on there uh cocktails is hilarious i love (laughs) cocktails is my shit um ari lennox she's amazing um that's my spiritual sister i connect with her she is so me and then i even started like a music playlist so i got some dope songs on there summer walker is like one of my favorite artists i just love her um But yeah, I wanted to do like a series on cut where like the people was like, would you get back with your ex? And a lot of people was like, hell no. (laughs) It was just so funny. And then uh, one of them was like, call somebody and tell them you have feelings for them. And the people did. And some of them was like, oh, cool. I do too. Let's link up. Let's have dinner. Let's connect. And it's like, what? If they weren't on this damn TV show, they would have never called that person. And who knows? Um, So, yeah, that was cool. Um, I need to put her on there because she about to be a whole mom. So, I'm going to put her on my mom page. And another thing is I noticed I have to organize everything. And when things aren't organized, that gives me anxiety, too. Like, the same way I organize these damn podcasts, I have to do my life life like that. Um, so maybe that's what she can help me do, too. 
Oh, I want to do an AI series too, cause it's a lot of um, it's a lot of stuff with AI that I just want to share, honey. Cause they is not being completely honest with us. What was her name? Lex, baby. I don't forgot the girl name already. That be one thing. My mind is sh- such a short span of memory. It's ridiculous. I just looked at the girl. But let me go because I will be here all day. Oh, look at her with her yoga. So I've been keeping up with my yoga. I'm so proud of myself. Um, I burnt my hand, so I haven't done it in two days. But I'm going to try to do it tomorrow. Up there cooking them damn eggplants. And on the grease don't pop on my damn hand. Um, but, I mean, it hurt, but I didn't get no blisters, but I'm still nervous because it hurt. Like, when I take a shower and the water hit it, it's like, ow. So, I know there's pain there. It just don't look like it. It's on a micro level. Um, so, yeah, I guess I will catch you guys on the next, oh, that's what I'm going to say. I'm, I'm doing an interview with um mama mish and papa mish so whenever they're ready you guys will hear that i think they have an amazing message to share with the world i would love to save it and it, i could play it for their future grandkids one day um because like one thing um uh, my mom my dad's mom isn't here but i would have loved to like see a video of her to hear her voice you know what i mean pictures just like at that time they didn't really have that stuff so now I'll be able to show my kids pictures of my parents and videos and stuff, um, even podcasts because we have that luxury. So it's almost like even when we perish or move on or transition, we'll still be stuck in time with the books that we leave, with the videos that we leave, with the pictures that we leave. Like we'll still be here in some form. And I think that's kind of amazing. So, yeah, let me go because, again, I'll be talking all night. Let me get some rest so I can hit this clock tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, Love. Which, how did I end it? Love. Blessings, love, and baby dust. Blessing, love, and baby dust to the mommy's in waiting and thank you for listening to all the love Mish podcast listeners share this with someone um even if you don't want to talk about it you could just share the link tree and as they go through the link tree you know they can click on what they want to review i think that's a, a um a sensitive way to share it oh and i want to end with this i was looking at another ted talk on another lady with fertility she did end up having a baby and her friend said, I'm so excited. Like, they were going to link up. She's like, I can't wait to meet you Friday. I'm so excited. It's been so long. Um, she was like, I know you've been dealing with infertility. And I'm so sorry for everything that you've gone through. And I just want to let you know that I'm pregnant again. And if you don't want to meet up, I completely understand. And I thought that that was amazing for her to, you know, having a baby is such an amazing triumph. And, you know, of course you want your friend to celebrate with you. But to take a step back and say, damn, I know my friend. I know she want to celebrate with me. But this may be too much for her. Let me just let her know that I'm pregnant, number one, before she see me. And if she doesn't want to come, I get it. I understand. We can link up some other time. Like, that's a friend. You feel me? Like, that was amazing. Um, So, yeah, I wanted to end with that. Just, I don't know. Just. Do the best you can with what you have. Because you never know what people are going with. You never know what their triggers are. And I don't know. I guess we just live and learn, don't we? So I will catch you guys on the next episode. Like we say, namaste, love stay, and vibe high, babe. You will not always vibe high. Trust me. I'm going to be the first one to say it. But feel it. You know, just don't stay there. Whatever you do, don't stay there. Cry it out. You know, punch it out. Whatever. Whatever your out is. And then just keep you know one day at a time just breathe what i want you to do is just breathe because just taking a breath you're committing to keep to to going another day and that's all we can expect from you just one day at a time right 
So I will check you guys on the next episode. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks a million for listening. There's a million podcasts in the world. You clicked on this one, little old this one, to hear what I have to say. I hope Universe has a special message for you. You can reach me on Linktree at forward slash love dot mish. I hope you have a better than a great day. Love ya. Talk to you later. Bye. You all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet, I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. And all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you?